Hallelujah. Let's all stand tonight, amen. Welcome tonight, amen, as we get ready to worship God. Those are live streaming with us, amen, as you join us tonight, as we get, get, get the mindset of worship. Let's all stand, amen. Worship God tonight. Let's sing this song wherever I am. Come on. Yes, amen. the sea I'll praise the name of Jesus lift up the name of Jesus for the name of Jesus lifting me wherever I am wherever I am I'll praise him whenever I can I'll praise him for his love surrounds me like the sea I'll praise the name of Jesus, lift up the name of Jesus, for the name of Jesus lived in me. I'm a new creation, oh, I'm a new creation, I'm a brand new man. All things have passed away, I've been born again. More than a conqueror, that's what I am. I'm a new creation, I'm a brand new man. I'm a new creation, oh, I'm a new creation, I'm a brand new man. All things have passed away, I've been born again. More than a conqueror, that's what I am. I'm a new creation, I'm a brand new man. You won't leave you like you came. You won't leave you like you came in Jesus' name. Bound, oppressed, tormented, sick, or still the same you won't leave you like you came in Jesus you won't leave you like you came or oh, you won't leave you like you came in Jesus name bound oppressed tormented sick or lay for that Holy Ghost the vax is still the same you won't leave you like you came you won't leave you like you came let's sing one more time oh you won't leave you like you came in jesus name bound oppressed tormented for that holy ghost of acts is still the same Sing it, amen. Wherever I am tonight, wherever I am, I'll praise Him whenever I can. I'll praise Him for His love surrounds me like the sea. I'll praise the name of Jesus, lift up the name of Jesus for the name of Jesus lifting. Let's worship him tonight. My God, we thank you once again, Lord, to be back in your house, oh God, to worship you and honor you. Father, that you will have your way tonight, God, Holy Spirit, your anointing as we wait upon you tonight, Lord, that you will have it your way tonight. We thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. As we slow it down tonight, amen. God, you have your way tonight as we worship you and honor you, exalt your name, amen, to the most high. Let's sing this song, amen, he is here. Thank you. Oh, he is Lord. He is Lord.
blessing in him and he is Lord. Amen. You are my Lord. tonight, amen.
worship him tonight amen father we worship you tonight father we honor you tonight god we, yes, thank, god, we thank you for your goodness your grace your mercy god Righteous name, O oh God, we thank you, Lord. Donovan, would you open us up in prayer? Father, we thank you, O oh God, for the goodness of your word, God. We thank you for grace, God. God, we thank you, God. God, if you minister tonight, God, you will ask God into our hearts tonight. We pray for all uh, as many in need, O oh God, spoken and unspoken. God, you see our hearts, God. You see our prayers and cries, O oh God, tonight. God, that you will have your way tonight, God, as you lift up these services, God, for you and everyone that will have your way tonight. God, we thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. You take some time. You greet one another this evening. Welcome everyone this evening to Door Church. Glad that you are here with us to worship God in this midweek service. Uh, just real quick, just want to run through some calendar items just to kind of remind you of what is happening uh, this month. And again, please grab a calendar for the month of April. They are there on the back table for you to take and familiarize yourself with all that is happening in the month of April. Uh, this weekend, we are going to be having a flyer pass out. Uh, they're going to be meeting at the BNI at 12 noon. And so I want to encourage you uh, to make some time and uh, go out there, pass out flyers, uh, invite people out to church. Joey will be heading that up. And then there will be Youth on Fire at 6 o'clock. Uh, if you need more details, you can always ask Cody or Joey. Or you can go on the website at tdl.church slash yof. And uh, again, that's going to be for anyone in uh, middle school, high school, college age. <coughs> I encourage you, if you know anybody uh, in, that in those ages, uh, invite them out. You don't have to be there. You don't have to be a part of. But if they're uh, of that age and you can bring them, I encourage you to do so. That way we can continue to build up that ministry. Uh, and then just looking ahead to the 15th, Monday the 15th, uh, there will be a men's discipleship in McMinnville. Uh, again, if you want to attend, please let me know as soon as possible. 
I will be reserving the vehicle and uh, don't want us to be smushed sardines. And uh, if, you're, if you are able to go, uh, please let me know. We'll be leaving around 3.30, 4 o'clock Monday and then uh, be back by midnight and around that time. And so if you are able to make it again, please let me know and we can make those arrangements. Then looking ahead, just two quick dates um, or a few dates here, May 20th through the 24th. This is going to, pe to be the Pacific Northwest Conference uh, in McMinnville. And again, June 17th through the 21st, that's going to be our uh, very own Tucson Conference. Our mother church uh, will be hosting that. And I encourage you, uh, if you are able to make that investment, I encourage you to be a part of that. If you need information for the Tucson Conference, the information is hanging there on the back board. And... Uh, Gather that information, hotel information, all that. If you need more details, you let me know, and we can make some arrangements. And so with that, uh, I believe that is all the announcements for now. We're going to go ahead and take up our offering this evening. I want to uh, read <coughs> a scripture out of Proverbs chapter 3. We're going to read verse, I'm going to read verse 5 and verse 6. And it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. So this is going to be one of a, a, a very comforting passage, a very comforting text that we can cling to. Especially when we're facing uncertainties, especially when things are unstable, when things are difficult in our lives, we can look back at this text and we can we can find comfort and we can find security. And so your situation or your situation around you may be beyond your understanding. You may not understand all that is happening and how it's going to work out, but God knows what's going on. Right. God knows what your stresses and your burdens are. He knows all the hows, he knows the whens, he knows the whys. And when you don't know what to do, you don't know what's going to happen next, you don't know how things are going to work out, the Bible tells us to trust in him. Right? That here we can see to trust the Lord with all of your heart, with everything about you. Follow God's guidelines, follow God's commands, knowing that uh, uh, that as you practice obedience, that he's got your back, right? That when you trust him and you obey with your finances, with your life, with your decisions, God will provide. God will move. God sees everything that happens to you. He knows uh, how to protect you. He knows how to provide, and he knows how to make it, make it happen. And we may not understand it. But I want to encourage you, continue to give your tithes, your offerings. Let God uh, help you. You be obedient to what he's asked you to do. Different ways to give that are on the screen. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes. Cody, would you pray? Appreciate that this evening. Let's go ahead and turn our Bibles to the book of Matthew, chapter 4. <clears throat> book of Matthew, chapter 4. How many know serving God is about having a relationship with Him? Now imagine how sad life would be if those that you love those that you 
were close to, those that you uh, have grown up with. Imagine those uh, and how life would be if those that you love followed a checklist to prove their love for you. That they walked around carrying a checklist, okay, I said good morning, check. I gave a hug, check. I gave a kiss, check. Right, that checklist could be checked off in a matter of moments. No emotion behind it. And so if we think about this, if we had a relationship based on a checklist, how many of you would like to have that type of relationship with those you love? Having a checklist would not have a, a need to express any sense of affection, right? It, it might be easier, right? It might be easier to, to be with someone if you don't have to worry about their feelings and their emotions and showing uh, some sort of affection. But it's just a matter of getting things done when it comes to a checklist, Right, sometimes if, uh, well, I have a little checklist on my phone of things that I need to do throughout the day. They don't have a specific time. They don't have, well, sometimes they have a specific date. Uh, but as I go down the list, check, 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 there's no emotion involved. There's no consideration. It's just I need to get these things done so I can get them off my list and move on to the next thing. I don't know about you, but the people I love want more out of a relationship with me than just having a checklist. When it comes to our relationship with God, you can't turn it into a checklist relationship. It's not about just having a, a, a religion that you belong to. It's about abiding in Christ. John 15 verse 4 says, Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the, in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Now, in reading this text, this speaks of intimacy with Christ. This speaks of having a bond. This speaks of, of you making a connection. This speaks of you uh, having this relationship that brings you and draws you closer to Christ. You don't have to be close to someone in order to complete a checklist. But when you abide in Christ, this speaks of growing and becoming more and more familiar with Christ. Right? A vine and a branch, those things are supposed to grow. And so it's, not, it's more than just a matter of a checklist. This is speaking of relationship, that that relationship is supposed to grow. It's supposed to expand. It's supposed to branch out and be fruitful. And so abiding in Christ means that there is dependence in who he is. So if you want to be spiritually strong, then the, the wise thing to do is that you must abide in Christ. See, there's no strength required. There's no strength that is needed in completing a checklist. You can co probably complete checklists from within your bed, right? You, you, you don't have to go about your day. You can stay probably in one spot and complete some, check, some things on the checklist. But those who contend and those who draw near to Christ, they have a deeper relationship with Christ. Some people think, I'm a bad person if I don't go to church. Others think I'm a good Christian because I go to church. Being here this evening, I appreciate all of you for being here. But being here this evening and filling up a seat is part of a checklist that uh, some people make. Church. Wednesday. Sunday. Not everyone that comes to church has a genuine relationship with Christ. 
Just because someone misses a service doesn't mean that they don't have a relationship with Christ. And, you know, there, there might be some, some, uh, you know, some other reasons in between, but now there are some who miss quite a few, and their commitment to Christ is questionable, right? You might question their salvation. You might question their their uh, their foundation. You might question their commitment and uh, their faithfulness, and and you begin to wonder. You know, I wonder if that's how their life is. I wonder if that's how their marriage is. I wonder if that's how their their ministry is. I wonder if this and and you begin to wonder some things. But being in church should be just the minimum standard, right? It's that's that should be the baseline is to be in church because having a relationship with Christ is more than just being in church. Being in church should strengthen your relationship with Christ that you already have with him outside of church. Right? When you come to church, that you are being strengthened in your faith. Outside of church, you are building a foundation. Outside of church, you are adding to those things that have edified you, that have helped you and encouraged you when you went to church. You won't get far with having checklist Christianity. You have to pursue Christ. You have to contend against the devil to keep your relationship with God alive and healthy. Let's read Matthew chapter 4, beginning in verse 1, and we're going to read through verse 4. Excuse me. I have a pull on my lip. I want to minister a sermon entitled, More Than a Checklist, Matthew 4, verse 1. The Bible says, And Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Consider with me, first of all, the temptation. I grew up as a Catholic. Uh, It wasn't really my choice. It was more of my culture, right? It, this is the way that I grew up. My parents were Catholic. My nana and tata were Catholic. Their parents were Catholic. The whole family was Catholic. And so it was more of my Mexican culture. There was no genuine relationship with the God of the Bible. It was about being a good person. It, was a, it wasn't about... A, It wasn't about living for God. We weren't concerning ourselves with how we lived our lives. We lived our lives according to the way we thought was good. We were good people doing bad things. So it was a checklist of do's and don'ts. And if I'll be honest, it was a very small list of do's and don'ts. Right? We didn't, again, didn't concern ourselves with what is right and was, what is wrong. We had good morals. Don't get me wrong. We, you know, we weren't completely horrible people, but at the same time, we were not righteous. Right? We were not saved. We weren't concerned with what God wanted to do or, or what God wanted from us. We weren't concerning ourselves with, am I honoring God by doing this? Am I dishonoring God by doing that? We had no honor for the God that we believed in. And so I was taught, don't drink, don't smoke, don't chew. But in the case that you find yourself doing those things, just be safe. That's the way that I was taught. So just because you don't drink, you don't smoke, you don't chew, doesn't mean that your heart is right with God. Right? We can look at the don't list, the don't do list. Oh, I don't do that. I don't do that. That does not mean that you're saved. It does not mean that you have a right relationship with God. Just because you don't murder, just because you don't lie, or just because you don't steal doesn't mean that your heart is right with God. We can take, for instance, 
the rich young ruler. Mark chapter 10, verse 17 through verse 22. The Bible says, Now as he was going out on the road, one came running, knelt before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one that is God. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud. Honor your father, honor your mother. And he answered and said to him, Teacher, all these things I have kept for my youth. Then Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, One thing you lack, go your way. Sell whatever you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, take up your cross and follow me. But he was sad at the word and went away sorrowful. For he had great possessions. This guy kept a do not checklist of things that he stayed away from. Right? Jesus was beginning to dig at his heart. He was beginning to chip away at that checklist. Jesus, knowing all things, says, do not this, do not. And he tells him, you know the commandments. He says, you know what's up, basically. You know what's expected of you. Do not, uh, and he, he goes on a list, he says, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not, do not, do not. So these are the things that this rich young ruler is staying away from. But then Jesus goes on and says, you know the commandments, but listen to me, Richie Rich, you lack one thing. He says, there's one thing missing out of your life. Does it matter what you don't do? Right? And this is what Jesus is pointing out to him. It doesn't matter what you don't do. What matters is what you do. And so because it doesn't matter what you don't do, you are still not wholeheartedly willing to serve the Lord. Right, and so here's Jesus. He's exposing this rich young ruler's heart. He's beginning to expose the rich young ruler's uh, motives. Question that I thought about is, you know who crucified Jesus? Who knows who crucified Jesus? Who crucified Jesus? Pharisees? Who crucified Jesus? Who crucified them? Romans? Who's us? Which people? Huh? The neighbor? (laughs) It It was people that knew the law. Right? The Jews. It was the Jews that said crucify Jesus. Yes, the Romans took him and crucified him, but it was the people, the Jews, the, the people that knew the law said, hey, take him and crucify him. It was the people that knew the commandments. It was the people that knew the law. It was the people that knew the word. You would think it'd be criminals and haters. You would think that it's people that don't know the word of God. But it was the very people that knew the word of God that crucified him. It was the people who knew what to do and what not to do. Yet they still crucified Christ. Why? Because they had a checklist Christianity. Someone said they were familiar with God's word. They were gathering together in worship. They were putting their hope in the promise that the Messiah would someday come. But their identity was not in the promise of what God would someday do for them. It was the religious acts they were accomplishing on their own. A checklist relationship in what they believe. I don't recommend that that's what you have. I don't recommend that that's the way you live for God is with a checklist of do's and don'ts. In our text, Jesus' temptation is the same as our temptation. 
right? Saying no and saying yes. This is what Jesus found himself doing as he was being tempted in the wilderness. He found himself in a place of having to say no or having to say yes. And he says no to some things. He said no to turning rocks or turning stones into bread. He said no to throwing himself down from the pinnacle of the temple. He said no to bowing down and worshiping the devil. Those are good no's, right? Those are good no's. And so what do we have here in this list? We have one good thing, and we have two evil things. Now, why do I say we have one good thing and two evil things? Because bread is not bad. Right? Bread is something that is needed. You need food. And so here, the devil is tempting him with something that is good. Bread isn't evil. Even if you're fasting, bread isn't evil. Right? There's nothing wicked about bread. It might put on a couple of calories on your, you know, and make your belly a little fluffier. But at the end of the day, it's not evil. It's good. But to bow down and to worship and to tempt God, then those things are evil. And so here is some truth about kingdom living. That many times decisions are not based on, uh, they're not based about being good or bad. But it's about good and better. What's good? But not only what's good, but what is better? Now, who agrees here that obedience is, is good? Is obedience always good? Yes, obedience is always good? All right, let's just all just shake our heads. Now, obedience is, is good, but is it always good? Should we always be obedient? No. Don't always be obedient. Now, we would expect for Jesus to obey, right? He's, he's the son of God. He's perfect. We should, we should expect him to obey, but which is better? Which is better, obedience to the devil or obedience to the father? Right? He still has to obey. One is good, but which is better? Obedience is good. But as someone said, it depends on who you're obeying. Which one's going to be better? In our text, Jesus is being tempted by the devil to rebel against God. Right? So now, now the devil is trying him. Now the devil is testing him. He's, he's testing the foundation. He's testing his, his commitment. He's testing his faithfulness to his father. So Jesus declined the opportunity to satisfy his physical hunger. I mean, try going 40 days without food. <laughs> nope, <laughs> that was quick. Nope. I don't want to even imagine. I don't want to even have that thought in my head. Right? But Jesus declined the opportunity to satisfy his physical hunger even after not eating for 40 days and 40 nights. He refused to eat. What does he do? This, the devil comes and he tempts him. But Jesus quotes the Old Testament scripture and says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Jesus is making a statement here. He's raising the standard. He's raising the bar. So it's not about the do's and don'ts. It's about making a decision to obey the Father, right? He is more concerned with the spiritual food that comes from the Father than feeding himself, than feeding his flesh. But see, Jesus, besides saying no, he had to choose the yes. Saying yes to God is a choice for you. Right? No one's going to force you to say yes. It's a choice you have to make. It's a decision you have to make 
every single step of the way. And so which is, so we see Jesus here choosing yes, which is God's word that consists of truth. Right, it is the word, he says, but you shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Why is, why is he choosing the word that comes out of the mouth of God? Because the word of God consists of truth, power, and life. So he says, I would rather choose those things than to feed myself and sustain myself for maybe a day or two. I would rather choose life. I would rather choose power. I would rather choose the truth. I like the way the Message Bible puts this text. Matthew 4, 4 says, Jesus answered by quoting Deuteronomy. It takes more than bread to stay alive. It takes a steady stream of words from God's mouth. It takes more than bread to stay alive. It takes a steady stream of words from God's mouth. A steady stream, a consistency, a faithfulness, something that is constant, something that is not hindered. Listen, this is why we need to be consistent in giving ourselves to the word of God, being consistent in praying and worshiping God. We need consistency in our relationship with God. It's not a checklist. It's based on relationship. I am consistently a husband. I never stop being a husband. But imagine if I call my wife and say, hey, I'm taking a vacation from being your husband. She's going to say, yeah, come pack your bags and go. Right? We don't take vacations. You don't take vacations from your Christianity. You don't take vacations from your commitment to God. There has to be a consistency, a constant flow. See, Jesus didn't refuse to eat food because it was evil to eat food. Food is not evil unless it's like Mexican food restaurants here in Washington. <laughs> then, those, then that's very evil and wicked. <laughs> Anyways, food's not evil. But there are decisions that do involve you having to choose the higher and the better thing. There has to come a point where you have to make the right decision. And by Jesus saying no to the devil, he was saying yes to his father. Right? So these are choices that involve wisdom. What is the best? What is better? This is a blessing, but how many know blessings can be curses, right? This, this might be good, but it might distract me from this. You know, this, this might be good, but this is better. We have to be able to have wisdom. These decisions require the will to continue to make the better choice spiritually. You have to have that will to want to make the better decision. You can make a decision to serve God, but it doesn't mean that you will serve God. As I've mentioned before, I've, I've come to the altar, I've given my life to Jesus many times as I was a young disciple, and I probably I can't Count how many convert cards I filled out. And I said, yes, I will live for God. But then I get up and I wouldn't live for God. Right? We can make a choice to serve God, but it doesn't mean that we will serve God. We can make a decision, uh, you know, to come and commit our lives to Jesus and commit our ways to him and say, yes, I will be faithful. But it doesn't mean that you will. During uh, the sermonizing of the sermon, Pastor Foley had included this illustration about two frogs on a log. This is the first time I've ever heard of this one, but this illustration real quick says there were two frogs on a log. 
One decided to jump. How many frogs are still on the log? How many frogs? Huh? One? None? None? Two? How many of you passed math? All right, so listen again. There were two frogs on a log. One decided to jump. How many frogs are still on the log? The answer is two frogs remain on the log. Right? Two frogs remain because one decided to jump, but actually jumping is something different. Now, does that make sense? See, we can come to church, and we can decide to serve God. But to actually serve God, that's a whole different thing. You can make a decision to want to jump all in, but to actually jump in, that's a whole different thing. So to decide and to jump are actually not the same thing. So we need to exercise the yes and no muscle to make better decisions and continue to make better decisions. Right? We have to do better in what we choose to do. Thinking about the church in general, looking back to 2019, 2020, right at the beginning stages of COVID and through COVID. And I was talking to some people uh, recently, and I thought, you know, COVID has really changed things. It has really affected not only people, but it has changed church in general. It has changed the way we do things. COVID has weakened the yes and the no muscle for many faithful followers of Christ. It has weakened our no. Why? Because people were eating more during COVID. They were home more. They were homebodies. I know I was part of that crowd. And you put on some pounds, some COVID weight. And I still haven't been able to get away from it. It caused people to have more attitudes. It caused more people to have indulgences, to have to deal with anxieties and really reflect and, and work on their marriage. They were forced and they were changed. It has also weakened our yes. Things that were a routine. Things that we had trained ourselves to say yes to has changed. People missing church. I'll just watch a live stream today. I'll stay in my PJs. I'll just watch a live stream. When it used to be, yes, I'm going to church. Yes, I'm going to be committed. Yes, I'm going to do. Yes, yes. It changed our yes. People struggle with prayer, with Bible reading, struggle with attending outreach or fellowship and witness. I was telling someone, man, we used to fellowship all the time. Now we don't. Why? Because COVID happened. Like, let's, let's just blame COVID. Right? COVID just, just messed everything up. Let's look at the exercise. Hebrews 4, verse 14 through 15. I want to read it out of the New Living Translation. And the Bible says, So then, since we have a great high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all of the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. If Jesus is said to be our hope as one who has been tempted in every way, right? That's what the Bible teaches us, that he was tempted in every way like us. And so if he is to be our hope and yet he was tempted yet without sin, then that means that you and I, we can follow his example, right? We can follow what he's done and laid out for us and being able to resist temptation. See, he's not there only for when we fail to resist temptation. He's not only there when we fail to keep our commitment. 
but he's there to keep us from falling. Now, if we consider one of the things that we do to exercise our yes or no muscle of faith, we can talk about fasting. Right? This is a moment where we exercise our muscle of yes and no. You make a decision. You make the decision, I'm not going to eat. I'm not going to satisfy my cravings. I'm not going to satisfy my flesh. I'm not going to satisfy my appetite. I'm not going to give in to, desire, to the desire to eat. Right? You make a decision. Now, exercising our yes and no muscle during a fast is important. See, this can help you with keeping your sinful desires at bay. Keeping your sinful desires uh, in control, keeping them in check. Hopefully that's, hopefully that's something you want to do is keep your desires in check. But exercising our yes and no muscle during our fast can really help us guard our hearts. Now we can... We can uh, take some time to fast, and we can say, you know what? I'm not going to give myself to greed. I'm not going to give myself to hate. I'm going to say no to not having control. Fasting can help you put your good desires in their proper place. right? You don't want to have good desires for sinful things. Again, you might have some good desires, but what is better? It's not a bad thing to eat. It's not a bad thing to stay healthy. But which is better, to feed your flesh or to feed your spirit? And again, food is a good thing. Bread is a good thing. Tortillas are a good thing. But they're not good when you're fasting. They're not good when you're exercising your spiritual muscle. See, during a fast, you prepare yourself to make some tough decisions. You make preparation for something that is going to happen. You make preparation for something that is going to be. You are making spiritual preparations to keep yourself strong. You prepare yourself to deny the good for what is best. So this is what Jesus, this is what we see Jesus doing. Now what better way to start your ministry than by denying yourself what is good? To receive and do what is best. This was the beginning stages of Jesus' ministry. He just got baptized. He was sent to the, to the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. He was led to the wilderness. And now Jesus is starting his ministry. And well, the first thing he does is he denies himself what is good to receive for himself what is best. This set the standard for the rest of his earthly ministry. This is why it's good that you set a standard in your, in, your, in your life. You set some boundaries. Not that everything that you do is going to be bad or everything that you do is going to be good, but you set some boundaries that are good and healthy. Why? Because you're choosing what is best. He learned to deny himself. He learned to deny his flesh. He learned to deny worldly gain. Now, imagine if Jesus didn't start that way. What if he would have turned those stones into bread? Would it have made it easier for Jesus to give in to sin after that? Right there again, there was nothing wrong with him eating some bread. He was fasting for 40 days, 40 nights. He could have eaten some. But would that cause him to have lowered his standard? Would that have kept him from saying, you know what? I'm not going to die on the cross for these people. I'm going to sit here and enjoy this bread and watch them get crucified. See, when you fast, you don't just quit eating. 
it's more than just not eating for a few days. Now, it's that, if that's all you do, then I hope you understand that there's going to be limited value to that, where you just starve yourself for a day. There's going to be limit. It's going to be limited as to what, what can happen in your spiritual life. When Jesus fasted for 40 days, for 40 nights, it wasn't because of what the doctor recommended. It wasn't because his blood sugar was high. It wasn't because, uh, you know, he had a fatty liver. It wasn't because he was unhealthy and he needed to stay off, uh, uh, you know, uh, bread and he had to go on keep. That was, it wasn't something that was recommended. He fasted for more than that. He sought his father's will. And he submitted himself to it. See, when we fast, it's more than just staying away from food. You can stay away from food for several days, but it doesn't mean that you're having much spiritually, that you're growing much spiritually, and you're not growing spiritually healthy. You can stay away from food, but it doesn't mean it's benefiting you spiritually. When you fast, it's a time to pray. It's a time for you to seek God. It's a time to repent. It's a time to prepare yourself to, to prepare yourself to fight against hell. Right? Because the powers of hell will come against your thoughts, will come against your desires. It will cause you to break those those uh, those uh, uh, boundaries that you've set up so that you can give yourself to the pleasures of your flesh. time to grow when you're fasting it's a time to grow closer to God it's a time to say God I want you more than my lunch think about that lunch is good but what's better God I want you more than my lunch but see if you don't want God Prayer is not going to be something that you seek. Think about this. Why aren't you praying? It's because you don't want God. But when you want God and you're desperate for God, you pray, you seek, you contend. Why? Because you want God. If you don't want God, Prayer is not going to be something you want. If you don't want God, prayer will not be satisfying. <laughs> I've only been praying for two minutes. Oh, my God. Lord Jesus, help me. <laughs> I've had those prayers. I have sat in prayer many times. And it has felt like an eternity. And I look at my watch and it's like, man, it's only been 30 seconds. It's not satisfying. Why? Because at that moment, I don't want God. Oh, but when I want God, I can be in prayer. And then I can look up at my clock and, man, it's been an hour already. What in the world? So the question is, is how is it going with your yes or no muscle? Has it been weakened? Has it been strengthened? Are you finding yourself saying no when you should be saying yes? Or vice versa, do you find yourself saying yes when you should be saying no? Some people physically exercise more than they do spiritually exercise. But guess what this means? It means that your walk with God might be at risk. Finding time alone with God is a challenge. Yes, that's true. It is a challenge. I've been a working pastor. I've been a full-time pastor. It's a challenge both ways. In my mind, when I was a working pastor, oh, man, you know, when I'm full-time, I'm going to have all the time to pray. But listen, it's even more of a challenge. Because now in your mind, oh, I got more time to do this. I can do this. Oh, this and this. Finding time alone with God is a challenge, but it's necessary for your spiritual growth. 
whether you do it first thing in the morning, whether you do it during your lunch, whether you do it after you get home, before you go to bed, find time alone with God. It's about preparation. But let's look at, lastly, at our preparation. The fact that Jesus knew when to say yes and when to say no is not what qualifies him to encourage us in the struggle of our faith. It was the fact that he overcame things that, were our, that are more intensely than what we face is what qualifies him to encourage us. John 16, says, and this is Jesus saying it's to his, uh, to his disciples, in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. He says, I have overcome the world. Now, I don't know if you agree with me or not, but I'd say that no one was tempted as powerfully as Jesus was. I don't want his temptations. I don't want his struggles. I'll take mine any day. But at the end of his three-year ministry, he faced the, the toughest of his battles. He was facing the cross. Matthew 26, 36 through 42. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to his disciples, Sit here while I go and pray over there. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and be deeply di distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. Stay here and watch with me. So we begin to see that he is struggling. The weight is on his shoulder. Verse 39, he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Verse 41, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, a second time he went away and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this, cup can, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done. And then verse 44 says, so he left them, went away again, and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Now, we can read about the distress that Jesus was in. This is, a, this is a small portion of what Jesus prepared for by saying no to the world and yes to his Father's will. This is what he was preparing for when he was led into that wilderness and fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. That's what he prepared for. This is what his, his spiritual exercise came face to face with. Be a sacrifice for sin. Now the will of the Father is what Jesus exercised for, which formed his decision. He says, I'm going to choose what is better, and that began to shape the way that he lived. He had you and I in his mind. He had you and I's destiny in his mind. He said, I will die for them, even though they are sinners, even though they will mock me and beat me. They, he had you in his mind for their salvation, to give them hope. Everything the devil tempted Jesus with was worth it. Because in the end, everything became Jesus's. But how did it become Jesus's? It wasn't just because it was a yes or no, but because of the cross. The devil was tempting, hey, bow down and worship me, and I'll give you all of these kingdoms. What if Jesus would be like, yeah, you know what? I'd rather take all these kingdoms now than have to go through the cross. So here's a powerful truth that we can cling to as well. Listen to the words of Jesus. John 14, 16 and 17. Jesus says, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, the 
he may abide with you forever, the spirit of truth. This is the same spirit that led Jesus to the wilderness. But not only was Jesus led into the wilderness, the spirit helped him in the wilderness. See, Jesus came face to face with temptation. And he fought temptation as a man. He didn't fight temptation as God. He fought temptation as a human like you and I, with every, every attack of the flesh. This is why Paul said the following in Galatians 5.16 through 18. He says, I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. So when you walk in the spirit, what you are doing is you are relying in the spirit, especially in the times of temptation. But why do we fall into temptation? It's because we're not walking in the spirit. Matthew 4.11. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. So what do we see happening according to this text? We see that the spirit of rebellion leaves. And the spirit, or angels, that remained loyal to God, came and ministered to Jesus. Jesus is in a battle. Jesus is being tempted. He overcomes temptation, and God sends his spirits, God sends his angels, and they begin to minister to Jesus. They begin to encourage him. They begin to edify him. They begin to strengthen him. So when we submit to God, to the God of heaven, heaven's aid is directed to us. We are not left alone, but you've got to find some time to cry out to God. You've got to find the will within yourself to say, I will say yes to the will of the Father. I will say no to my flesh. I will say no to these distractions. I will say yes to the will of the Father. I'll leave you with this quote. It is a consistent pattern throughout Scripture that God leads into the wilderness those he prepares for service. A few examples include Moses, who spent many years as a shepherd in the wilderness before he was called to lead Israel out of Egypt. David also spent time in the wilderness hiding from Saul. The nation of Israel wandered in the wilderness for 40 years prior to entering the promised land. The principle here is that times of testing can be a sign of God's approval. It can rightly be viewed as preparation for a great work. Any activity is great when done is unto the Lord. What are you allowing the Spirit of God to prepare you for? Or better yet, how are you preparing now? For the obstacles and the trials that you're going to have in the future. Listen, it's more than a checklist. It's a relationship. A consistent flow of the words that proceed out of God's mouth. That's what we need. Let's work and build our relationship. With God. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes for just a few moments. Every head bowed, every eye closed. <clears throat> Real quick, just want to give an invitation to you. Maybe you're not saved, maybe you're not born again, maybe you haven't surrendered your life to Jesus. But tonight you want to get your heart right. Tonight you want to make a decision to surrender your life to Jesus. Tonight you want to make a decision to surrender your will to him.
that it's not about you. It's not about what you want. It's about what God wants to do through you and in you. This evening, Jesus isn't the Lord of your life. But you want to make him your Lord and Savior. Right where you're sitting, if that's you, God's dealt with your heart, would you lift up your hand? We want to pray with you. If you want to surrender your life to Jesus, or maybe you want to rededicate your life to Jesus, would you lift up your hand? Anyone tonight? We want to pray with you. We want to believe God for you. Amen. As every head is bowed and every eye is closed, you're saved. You're born again, but that doesn't mean that you're constantly saying yes to the will of God. Listen, life is hard. Marriage is hard. Ministry is hard. Being faithful is hard. Being involved in the things of God is hard. But how are we preparing to be spiritually strong, spiritually fit? To come against what the devil is throwing at us. How is your relationship with God? How is your yes or no muscle? What's going to happen when you are tempted? What's going to happen when you are tried, when you are tested? Will you be found with a fragile faith, with a weak foundation, or will you be prepared? Don't let this relationship be like every other relationship where you can settle to see your friends every other day and maybe the weekend. No, let this relationship you have with God be the most important thing in your life. Contend. Sacrifice for it. Let it be your priority. Want to open up these altars? You want to come find a place to pray? Maybe there's some things you've got to get right in your heart. You come, don't be ashamed to come and find a place to cry out here to God, here at the altar. These altars are open. You come, find a place to pray as we sing a song and we worship God tonight. You come.
Holy God, we worship you, Father, we exalt you in this place. Oh, we honor you, we honor you, oh God. Oh, yes, Lord. More than a checklist. Let it be relational, based on a hunger and thirst for righteousness. Let's feed on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Let's contend for what God wants from us. Let's continue to remain faithful, not because it's a good thing to do, but it's the better thing to do. So let's, uh, let's continue to keep that in mind, keep the uh, announcements in mind as well. Remember, men's discipleship on Monday, outreach this Saturday. Uh, get, grab a calendar. Let's bow our heads, close our eyes, stick around, fellowship with one another. Uh, Sean, would you lift your voice? Dismiss us.